Hey everybody, I'm Mr. James. I'm Ren. And we are here today, we are starting a new YouTube channel that you are currently watching. Um, as most of you know, we are out of school here in Fargo uh, because of COVID-19, the coronavirus. And um, we had just started in my, my science class, in which Ren is a, uh, a class member. We had just started uh, work on a, uh, a big long kind of project that, that uh, we were working on uh, involving the corn earworm, which is a, an insect most of you have done your research and should already know what it is. For anybody who's not watching, you should Google what a corn earworm is. We're going to be looking at them uh, more in depth as we go along. So uh, my students had put together some investigations uh, that we were going to conduct in my classroom but uh, because we're not in my classroom, we decided to set up a laboratory, if you want to call it a laboratory, here in our basement at the house here where, uh, where I live with my family, Ren is my daughter. So um, we are going to uh, explain to you today what our investigations are, what the, the eight different investigations are, and then we're going to kind of walk you through setting up each of the investigations, and then each day we're going to take some video of us going through the process of collecting data, making observations, so on and so forth. So hang with us, or we'll get right to it. So our first um, experiment is just a control variable. So you always have to have a control. So that will be their normal diet and uh, room temperature. So two for the independent variable is hay as a food source. And then three is sugar as a food source. Four is food coloring, so we will add uh, food coloring to their normal diet. Uh, dog food as a food source, and they will be um, contained in a low temperature area, which is six degrees Celsius. And seven is high temperature, uh, high temperature area um, that they will be contained in a 37 degrees Celsius area. Um, eight is dark environment, so they will be living in uh, with like l very little sunlight. Uh, and nine is a larger habitat, so they will live in a larger container. Okay guys, all right, so got our little workstation set up here. So we have to, every day, we have 15 uh, uh, individuals in each of our experimental groups, right? So the first thing that we need to do so that we can compare from day one, which is today, the 19th of March, all the way up to um, when the uh, investigation is done, is we need to each day take some, um, some observations, make some observations and collect some data. So the, the three things that we're going to look for are, first, we're going to look for the mass of each of the worms. So we've got a little tiny scale here that, as you can see, uh, measures to the uh, hundredth of a gram. Um, hopefully you can see that. Um, and then I've got my ruler so we can measure the length of each worm. And then um, we're going to just make some general observations on color of the worm. Because many of the, or one of the experiments, specifically the one with food coloring, had to do with whether or not the color of the worm would change um, over time. So, but each day we're going to have to open up all 150, 145 I guess it is, of each of these cups and we're going to have to do a couple of things. The first thing that we're going to do, and I'll show you with uh, our control group uh, specimen number one, is we take it, we open it up, and if you'll notice, so there's our little worm right there, he's hanging out on the side, but there's also all of this stuff uh, floating around there. All of that is called frass. 
and frass is a real fancy scientific word for worm poop, for caterpillar poop, right? So there's frass in there that we're going to dump out each day um, uh, just to kind of keep their environment nice and clean. So we're going to record this process as we go. Um, we're going to speed it up once uh, once we get to this introduction so that you can see us uh, collecting the data. Ren's going to be um, writing the information down over there on a little sheet, and we're going to get through this as quick as we can. Here we go. Okay, well that's interesting. So this worm has no mass as of yet. It is still um, less than a hundredth of a gram. So we're just gonna write down zero for today. Um, and then as, the, uh, as we move on, his mass is going to change, obviously. So um, we're gonna dump the frass here into our very scientific frass collection device. And then we're going to measure our little guy here or gal to see how long he or she is Whoop. and doesn't want to cooperate it doesn't look like so we're gonna have to kind of encourage him there so we are right at Ren we are at eight millimeters eight millimeters uh, in length for this little guy for number one okay tell there because I'm holding the, the scale but I measured out a five hundredths of a gram of hay for our for our worms okay so we're gonna, and we're gonna put the same amount in each one of the containers for the hay uh, group um, and if anybody can tell me why we're putting the same amount of food in each container, uh, put it in the comments down below. Celsius right now it was keeping an average of closer to 37 but okay for the uh, larger container we are remember with an independent variable we only want to change one variable at a time so the only thing that we're changing is the size of the enclosure so we're weighing them measuring them and then we're going to put in the same food that they had which all of these little containers have roughly the same amount of food from the insect area in Mississippi. Um, they measured, I guess, before they put it in. So most of these are real close to the same amount. So we're just going to simply cut it so that it doesn't move the lid up for each one. And then we are going to put the lid on and number them. So this is number one.
going to put, so there's different kinds of kibble in here, and we are going to put um, two of each inside um, the con uh, container. We have this removed dog the food. We have removed their normal food, and we are replacing it with different kinds of dog food. Well, two different kinds of dog food. One is for chihuahuas and one is for Yorkies. We'll see if it makes corn earworms grow. Okay, so now we're, our next group is going to be food color that we're going to be setting up. So in order to get the food color, we're going to take the worm out, measure it, going to take uh, the food that's there, and we're just literally going to drop, uh, put a couple of drops of food color over the top, and then kind of try to stir it around a little bit with a toothpick to kind of distribute the food coloring as best we can within the soybean mixture. So that's what we're going to be working on next. put it up in the top of our uh, closet over there, our supply closet. So it'll stay up there. It'll be as dark as possible after we get all 15 of the worms in there. got a little miniature refrigerator set up down here. It's at five and a half degrees Celsius. Um, and we're gonna put it on the same shelf, on the upper shelf, Ren, oh. um, right there. Now, if anybody can tell me why I have a light inside the refrigerator. So I added that uh, battery powered light. Um, if you can oh, tell so me why, give me the uh, reason in the comments. I think Ren just told you. Oh. 